Hi, hi. Thank you, Joey. I appreciate your effort and time. Just give me a second. Uh, Mayan, can you put up the screen? Yep. Okay, I hope uh, all of you are able to see the screen. Yes, yes. I mean, thank you everyone, uh, every, all the participants for taking time off to be in this wonderful forum. Uh, my name is Sanjay. I'm the GM of uh, Give Please. Uh, to, uh, with me uh, in this forum is Mayang, who is our CTO. So it's me and Mayang will be presenting. And I have uh, Daniel Lim, who is our engagement head, Melissa, who is our product head, and together in the call, our founders from Australia. Um, okay, uh, let me uh, run through this quickly. Uh, what is Gift Place about and what we do and how it will benefit the entire charity fraternity and ecosystem. Uh, I will do the overview. Mayan will do the CRM and DMS integration and the IRAS innovation uh, we, which we had with IRAS team. Uh, Mayan, next slide. So basically, uh, in a nutshell, what does Gift Place and who we are? Uh, we are a Singapore uh, based fintech. We started in 2019 with the main focus of coming out there to help charities in the, in the form of digitalization to facilitate in the giving journey to make it both seamless uh, and easy and transparent by offering solution. When that's your solution, we have both fiscal and uh, digital uh, whole suite of products which we put in the plates for charities, which is in, uh, included in the innovation CRM platform to make this uh, a robust product. Uh, Mayang, please. So uh, to make this happen, obviously we need strategic partners and we have banking partners to make the payment ecosystem complete. And we work with uh, government agencies in lights of smart nations, Gulf tech, uh, Sing Pass, uh, Commission of Charities Office, SFA, and uh, we are the only uh, social service uh, focused organization uh, which who has been approved by Gulf Tech to have a direct integration of the API. So what do I mean by that is we have seamless onboarding after a donation, we can have uh, Sing Pass flash there and we can capture the donor's details which not only makes donors onboarding easy, these are vital information which charities needs for engagement purposes, IRAS tax reporting. And uh, we will show you to you how uh, this works in our next few slides. Some of our charity partners, uh, we have a holistic uh, uh, charities there, in this list as you can see, from Islamics to arts, to uh, elderly cares, to uh, international humanitarian aids like Singapore Red Cross, and our biggest client is Muiz Mayang. Mayang, yeah, sure. So this is basically our platform summary. We are a cloud-based CRM platform whereby we can do a whole suite of products I mentioned, payment and settlement to donor management to IRAS and Gulf Tech uh, integrations. We have a very powerful BI tool, which I think most of the charities from our interaction uh, on board with us, they love it. So we, we create different kinds of products for different kinds of entities. I mean, certain products, which is very valid for social impact, like SSCs like you, uh, in event, terminal, online, and uh, mobile apps. Likewise, for religious, uh, different needs, a donor interaction might have a digital experience of a mobile app coming soon. And we have a CSR products and definitely GovTech uh, identification verification and IRAS text reporting already embedded in the entire solution. So Mayan, please. So as you can see in this uh, slide, we have this integrated giving solution. This is what I meant by the fiscal digital giving. It is a terminal with the charity's own branding, image, messaging, everything done. And as you can see, this was for the Singapore Red Cross. And uh, select, give, and onboard. And I'll show you in the next slide. So when a person have donated maybe whatever amount, and they've tapped their credit card, you saw the SingPass QR code appearing. And after that, they will ask whether, as a donor, do you want to consent uh, this information being sent over to give, please? And once a donor say yes, this information is a live uh, information at real time, which is being passed over to uh, the charity through the CRM portal. Likewise, an acknowledgement SMS is being triggered in an email. And this information is being literally pulled by us from the uh, Gulf Tech server because 
the donors has authorized that. Next is, uh, I mean, some of the showcase for uh, Singapore Red Cross event, which we did. And uh, there are our terminals being uh, up and running in the uh, National Gallery of Singapore, DAC, and some we have done at uh, eWidget. My, my blank slide list is running too fast. Yeah, uh, we have done a giving solution, uh, e-donation widget. This is our web integration with SingPass. And this is a very recent project. My next slide. Yeah, so this is the entire spectrum. In 2021, we were awarded a project by NGS, and we did uh, the entire whole suite for seamless general donations to patron programs, to uh, integration to the uh, IT guard vendors, and, and Mayan will take on and detail more in specific of this, Mayan. Yep. So let me go to the CRM part quickly. Uh, so as a as a uh, you know solution provider, we also have a backend CRM which we provide uh, to our uh, to, to our organizations, uh, the charity organizations, showing the interactive dashboard, giving them a whole soul picture and everything in a real time data of what donations are happening, where donations are happening, and how donations are happening as well. And this is being created based on the requirements from the charities uh, and also based on what type of reporting they would like to have on their dashboard. Uh, and we use uh, a lot of different BI tools in order to generate these dashboards and show it to them. So as you can see, there are multiple tabs and in a single dashboard, we are able to showcase uh, multiple type of uh, reportings in, within a single uh, screen itself. Uh, apart from that, we also give the visibility to our uh, organizations, the charity organizations, that what are those, uh, how many type of donations are happening. They would be able to see the list of donations. They would be able to filter those donations, download those donations into Excel sheet. And it's a dynamic pagination. So you would be able to see a lot of pages would be displayed in a single screen where you would be able to go and view all the list of the pages. You can search any of the transactions that you would like to know. So, this is how the CRM uh, is being displayed. Apart from that, uh, we have a donor screen as well, where uh, the charity organization can go and see the list of all the donors, how they have uh, you know, uh, signed up into our system. Is it through manual entry or through SyncPass? They would be able to filter it out within this screen. Uh, they would be able to filter out based on the last donations they have done. What are the recent donations they have done? Uh, if they have been uh, you, you know, doing the recurring donations or they are doing a, uh, a singular donation. Uh, these these files and, and these donor information can also be extracted using the CSV extract uh, that we have provided in this uh, uh, screens. You would like to see uh, uh, the details of uh, our singular donor. Uh, you can go into the details of the singular donor and you'll be able to see what are different type of donations that person is doing. Is it a singular donations? What type? What are the different type of donations he has been doing and what is the total amount? You would be able to edit that donor. So let's say if someone gives uh, the charity call, uh, I would like to update my name or I would like to update my email address. They should be able to do it from the edit profile section and go and add, uh, update their information as well. If there are some cards which are being uh, deprecated or which are uh, which has uh, expired, they would be allowed to update those uh, uh, information as well. They would be able to see uh, the information of the cards as well as those things. They, again, these things can be again filtered out, uh, downloaded, and can be seen into an CSV file uh, as well. Apart from that, because these charity organizations, as Sanjay has explained, uh, we have given a lot of uh, devices and terminal uh, for them uh, for making the donation. So if the devices and terminals are placed in a specific locations, you would be able to see what are the locations and what are the areas where we're getting the donations a lot uh, into the system. Uh, if this, this is a specific area, you would be able to increase uh, the, uh, the charities are able to increase their uh, terminals and devices to get more donations out there. So they would be able to see the list of uh, donations. What are the donations happening on those locations? What are the description and everything they would be able to see? How many terminals are being deployed over there? They would be able to visualize in these uh, reporting. Apart from this, this is something very uh, recent we have been working on uh, is marketing. Uh, engaging with with uh, the donors in order to get and 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 you know get more donations uh, uh, from them is marketing. 
uh, we have enabled this uh, feature for a few of the charities uh, in the, and we would be enabling it for more uh, where they, we would we allow them to filter the list of donors based on let's say you would like to filter the donors uh, from their age what are their ages uh, age range you would like to uh, you know, filter and then give a marketing email to them through SMS, through uh, email, or, or you would be able to allow to do that and you know, you can engage more uh, with the donors uh, through our system. Uh, apart from this, we have, you know, you would be able to maintain the campaigns, the events that are going on, so you can create an event, you can update an event, and those events can be deployed on the terminal as well. Uh, we, apart from that, we have the POS management system, user management system, uh, CMS management system. And how we have secured all of this is through our, you know, two, fact, two, two bifurcated uh, database uh, uh, into our system. So the do donor information, the transaction information are being separated out in a way, even if one thing gets, uh, uh, you know, by any chance gets hacked, no one would be able to understand. Anyone would not be able to go and see the information of anything. So the separation is done in a, in a such a way that, uh, you know, it cannot be easily uh, decrypted or uh, hacked into the system as well. Now, I would like to go into the IRS module. All of them were related to our systems, how we have given. And this is something we have already enabled for a few of the charities uh, into our system. And because we have done a direct integration, and as Jean has uh, uh, introduced about uh, the system APIs, we have directly connected through our system, uh, CRM system, directly to the IRS in order to upload uh, those, uh, uh, those, those records into the IRS. We have been using the services, using the uh, JSON web services, which has been provided by IRS team. Uh, it's a server to server communication. So it is very much secure as well. And there is a whitelist. Uh, no, our system is only responsible to take uh, our IP addresses are only responsible to connect with them and get the data. No other system will be able to do that. Uh, we we provide as based on the IRS how they have implemented it is we uh, send a lot of uh, security credentials at the time of uh, sending those data. Uh, so it is secure. It cannot be hacked as well. You know? uh, and as well as, as Jane has explained, the crop pass uh, validations is also there, where the validations can be done through you know, scanning your uh, crop pass and search, uh, selecting your uh, system, uh, selecting your organization and then uploading those data. So I will quickly move to the next screen. This on the left side, you would be able to see the traditional way, which uh, Jane has explained. There is a lot of processes that you have to follow. However, our system is with few clicks itself. Uh, with few clicks, you would be able to upload uh, the information directly to IRS. Uh, this is how the screen looks like. So I would quickly walk you through the, how, what is the process that we have implemented uh, in, into our system and uh, uh, how the process is, how easy we have made uh, for the charity organization to upload uh, those things. So let me quickly share a different screen. Give me one minute. Yeah. Okay. All right. I hope you are able to see the screen. Okay. So there are two ways where uh, we have given the flexibility to our charity organizations, uh, where all the transactions that are happening within the system uh, through through gift please you can generate a report. So when you click on the generate a report, it will process all the transactions that has not been synced to IRS. So uh, it keeps the record of all the information of per transaction. What are the records that has been uploaded to IRS and what are the records are not uploaded. Once the record is being uploaded, uh, you would be able to see the list of all the transactions out here. Yes, uh, the donor information, few of the informations would be masked. Uh, as we have, uh, and once uh, you press submit, it goes to the crop pass as per the explanation that has been given by uh, Jane. It goes to the crop pass. You have to scan your uh, crop pass uh, with your mobile applications. Once the scanning is done and the consent has been given, uh, the syncing would start and the syncing happens in the batch so that we are not losing any data. Uh, small, small batches are being created and then those progress would also be seen on the screen that what is the progress happening and how the how much transactions has been synced 
uh, or not. And in case there are any problems into the system, the system would generate those information, give it to you that what are the transactions that has been failed into the syncing. So you can resync that. Bit. And as we are maintaining that what transaction has been seen and what transaction has not been seen, you would be able to regenerate it in case there are any failure or connectivity issues that are being available. Once the submission has been done, uh, we show uh, something like this, showing that these transactions uh, has been submitted. You would be able to export the transaction that has been synced to uh, the CSV file uh, that has been already synced to the uh, server. Once you press home, you will be back on this screen. Okay. Now let me walk you through with the uh, next screen, uh, which is this one. Uh, this is again, uh, what happens is let's say uh, there are some payments which has been collected on a cash or a check or through other system. And you would like to utilize our payment platform, uh, our CRM system uh, to upload those uh, information. So what you can do is you can drop the file. So we would be giving a sample format through which you have to create those format or files. You can drop that file. Again, the process would be exactly same. Once the file has been uploaded, we verify if the file has been uploaded in a right format, uh, then you can proceed. Once you have proceeded, it will upload, it will show the list of all the transactions that you have uploaded on the screen. Again, the same process, you would be able to see specific information and this information would be hidden like an RIC number, uh, which is critical. Once you submit, the process is same. You uh, you know, uh, scan your crop pass, the transaction will be synced into the batches. Once the transaction is synced with the confirmation number that we received from IRAS, those confirmation numbers will be available in your CSV file. So let's say if you want to refer it for later phases, absolutely. This gives you a lot of visibility and you know, accessibility of data that what has been uploaded, what are the transaction numbers, what are the response numbers that has been received from IRAS. So giving the flexibility and giving it easy for our charity organizations to upload from our system, from our CRM system is what we have done until now. And this is where we have given them a flexibility where they can upload the submission and submit uh, the transactions which has been happened through Gifty system, as well as they are being given a flexibility, they can upload all the transactions that has happened from outside of Gifty as well. This is what the, the simplification we have done overall into the submission of IPAS. So as, yeah. I think I have explained, I would be answering more questions uh, at the end of the sessions. So please post your questions on the pigeon and happy to answer them as well as the interviews. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayang and, and Sanjay. Actually, through our pigeon hall, there has been uh, about two or three questions. Uh, since we have about you know, six minutes left, maybe we can take this opportunity for you to answer them. Maybe I'll just that read out the, the first question. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, there, there was a person asking whether uh, the gift please termin terminals are organizational specific. For example, yes. does the merchant need a, a separate terminal for each charity they support? Or how easy is it for a donor to choose which charity if there is an option? Okay, so to answer the question, uh, we have been, uh, you know, we can give the charities an opportunity where they can have multiple terminals of their own. So it's not a singular terminal having list of all the charities. Uh, that can be a product in future. You have given us an idea now. <laughs> so uh, with, with this, uh, we give them a flexibility where they would be able to uh, list the terminal and you know, with a specific event as well. So it would be linked to a charity only uh, and our organization. But within the organization, let's say if you have different kind of campaigns or different kind of appeals that you would like to support, uh, those terminals are capable to hold a specific transactions related to that appeal or that uh, campaign itself. So yes, it's, it's being separated out per organization, but within the organization as well, uh, you would be getting the flexibility of, uh, you know, taking donation on a specific area or a campaign or a appeal as well, or a cause, anything. Thank you, Maya. I hope that uh, answered the participant's question. So there is another question, which apparently is the most popular question. So uh, this mm -hmm. participant is asking that, uh, you know, as a charity, they use multiple platforms to be able to receive donations. Uh, does mm -hmm. give, is Givebrief able to then integrate with other platforms such as giving.sg? or are, there, are these functions only available for this platform? 
to answer the question, uh, there could be flexibility in order to communicate with different system, but that communication has to be understood, learned, because it's a system to system communication that happens. However, we have given the flexibility where you would be able to upload, so you have to create the file in a specific format, uh, although you would be able to utilize our system and upload the IRA submission uh, through our system directly. But direct communication from server to server would have to be understood and built uh, in case it is required. But happy to do that as well. Uh, I'll, think, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll take this question about uh, fundraising permits uh, from Sarala. Uh, I think uh, this is basically a contactless terminal uh, whereby there is no solicitation. So uh, I think even NCSS basically would agree that if there's no solicitation, uh, it's an unmanned terminal sitting on the kiosk, uh, then you do not need to have fundraising permit. Unless when this permit basically goes on the street, then that's where the fundraising permits uh, is required. Even in a closed door event, I don't think that's required for permit. There was an event recently, the, the uh, Jamia uh, at MBS, it's a big event, ideas anniversary, the terminals was deployed and it's an invited guest. And in that context, there was no requirement for fundraising permit. Uh, I hope I've answered the question, yeah. Uh, with regards to the terminal, the terminal all has a SIM card and uh, there is no requirement for Wi-Fi. Well, so, uh, not yeah, so they can be carried anywhere, uh, literally moved around in Singapore. Uh, are there any last questions for Gift, please? If not, you can continue writing your questions onto pigeonhole if you think that there are questions that, uh, that you might need to think further. And then, you know, at the, at the last part of the overall Q&A, we can use that chance to then speak to anyone as well. Okay. Uh, Maya Sachi, I think there is a question, but if you prefer to take this offline, maybe... Uh, yes, so, yeah. uh, I'll yes. take it offline, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So Sarah, maybe after the end of this uh, webinar, we will basically be sending out post EDM, uh, you know, just to just to say who you can contact with for further inquiries, and then you can check this in with me, please.